Hi folks and thanks for joining me for this week's Stillwater tutorial. What you see in the vise is a cross between a humongous and a snake. Uh, now it's going to take a while to show you how to do this and I'm going to break that down for you in stages and I'll index this in the video so if you're already competent with certain stages of the fly you're more than welcome to skip through so that you get to the part you want or it's also handy if you need to revisit certain sections. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The first hook in the vise then is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. Now, the reason I like to use this hook is it's got a really big eye and uh, that's quite important for the way that I prepare my flies for tying this snake. So what I use to connect the front hook to the back hook is some fly line back and it's cheap and it'll last me, well, for as long as I'm going to be breathing on this earth. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do then is wax up a section of that and I've just taken not not any kind of measurement per se, but probably about 12 centimetres. And I'm going to put that down through the eye, like so. And then just dress it up. Now, what I've got to do next is to clamp that down. So I've got some uh, UTC black. It's at 140 denier. I'm going to get a bit of wax on it just to help me keep that pinned down then I can use my thumb and forefinger to pull it all back as tight as I can get it to the eye and then I'm going to capture that in and that still leaves plenty of room for your tippet material there I'm going to come all the way down to where the tag off my backing material is now make sure you keep this on the top of the shank that's quite important or it doesn't swim right then I can come in with my scissors and just remove the waste so I just thought while I was tying this fly I would break it down into sections and I'm going to put little uh, clips so you may be already a competent tyre and just to save you a bit of time because I know it's a long video I've indexed it so that you can just clip to the bit that uh, you need to have a look at so I'm going to stop probably a quarter of an inch from the eye of the hook now and I'm going to use my eyes now what I use is from B&Q it's uh, just toilet chain light switch puller stuff and I use some old scissors that I've got here to cut off two at a time to create my eyes. Now, simply the best way to do this is lay it on, just get a couple of turns, and then once you've got it into place, you can then move it around to suit your needs. And a couple of turns each way. Don't be tempted to do lots of turns the same way because what you end up doing is moving your eyes and they end up squinty. It's important to get lots of wraps in here just to keep them in the right place. Very often you can get some big fish with this. Um, I've been using these sort of flies to target perch not with very much success, I might add, but um, still, uh, they will take plenty of trout as well. So once I'm content that I've got that in place, I come to the front of the fly and whip finish. Now what I do with these, if I'm tying them, I tend to tie four or five and I do the preparation work so that when I've done, after I've done the first one, then that's dry by the time I've, I've prepped the fifth one. 
and it's ready to go so what I'm going to do is just come in now with my super glue and just make sure that's got a generous coat front and back and then I'll pop that off to the side to be dried and in blue, true blue Peter fashion I'm going to take that one out of the vise here's the one I made earlier now the next hook then is a Hanak H266 this is at size 10 as you can see it's a barbed hook it's on a heavy wire now I've got the part that I created in that first section and I want to attach the stinger now to get the right length just off camera here I'm using a ruler and what I want to do is get it three centimeters from the bend of the hook now I'll explain that a little better as once I've got it into position now with this you can if you like mark it I just put a little crink in with my thumb you want it to go down through the hook and I can see the little imprint I made with my thumb and I'm going to stop there so I know that from the bend here of the hook where my thumbnail is in my right hand to there is three centimeters and that's how I can get consistency with the flies and because I've waxed this, it just sits no problem. Now, the next thing I want to do is come in with a different thread. I'm going to use some nano silk for this. This is the black Semplify at 12 watt. And I want to keep everything nice and thin at the back. But it needs to be strong as well. So I'm going to come in, avoiding my point hook. I'm going to just get several wraps in. to trap that into place now what I'm going to do next is remove both the the rag end and the excess uh, fly line backing and just make sure you get that trapped in and these wraps are extremely tight you've got to have that strength. Now I know it may look like that, well, once a fish takes this tail, tailing hook, that it'll just pull the back in away, uh, but that doesn't happen. Not once you've super glued it, leave it to dry and secured it. It's a very strong fixing. Uh, it w well, it's never let me down, I'm sure. Uh, if you do it as I'm showing you here, it won't let you down either. So I'm just crisscrossing up and down that to make sure I get plenty of coverage and it's nice and tight. Now to finish off, I just do a hand whip finish. can be a bit awkward. You've got to bring it up under your first hook. Make sure you get it actually onto the shank and not onto the thread. A little bit fiddly, but it is worth it. Then I can take that away. And again, what I'm going to do is come in and give that all a good coat of super glue. And then I'll put that off to the side to dry and that will go nowhere so that's the preparation bit done we can get on with the actual tying of the fly and here we have the one I prepared earlier so what I do is five of these the first one I've done is now dry and I'm ready to start tying the fly 
at last, a bit of fly tying. But the preparation is very important, so please take your time and get that part right. Okay, I'm going to come back to my uh, nano silk, and what I want to do is just get a couple of turns in behind the eye, and I'm going to run that all the way to the back of the hook. Then I can remove my rat's tail. Now, for this fly, I'm going to be using some of Troutline's Chinchilla. It's Rabbit Zonka 4mm strips. Let's get some of this out of the packet. Now, you can work with the whole, um, the whole strand if you like, but for the purpose of the video, I'm going to just remove uh, some of this just for ease of working but when when uh, I'm just tying these for myself what I do is I tend to work with the whole strand just to stop me wasting any material so as you can see the chinchilla is nice and thick a bit thicker than rabbit and before I dress this up to the back of the hook I'm going to just come in comb out any of the under fur because you want maximum movement out of this material so just come in, comb it out. You can see all that under fur coming away in my brush. You know, there's quite a lot of it. You want rid of that. Well, I wouldn't get rid of it. What I do is I put it to the side and that, that makes a quite a nice dubbing for other flies. And uh, I'll try and show you me using that at some point. But once you're content that you've, uh, you've brushed out the chinchilla, you want to, on the skin here, you want to come back approximately a quarter of an inch and then just get them fibres out the way. Bear with me. It's not, a, it's not something you can rattle up in minutes, um, but it is worth the effort. So I'm just going to use my thumb and forefinger off my right hand to damp down and my left hand, damp down both sides, make your job a wee bit easier. Lay it on the hook, and I want to get a minimum of three turns, putting quite a lot of pressure onto my thread, but the nano silk can take it, and then make sure you don't catch any of them fibres in and get a few turns in front of your strip like so. If you just damp your fingers and slick it back, it just helps keep them fibres out the way. Okay, next then, I'm going to add a little bit of flash dubbing. This is Flashaboo and Silver from Troutline again. And if you've got the, uh, the proper frits, you can use that, but I um, I'm out of the Dave Downey gold and silver fritz, but I've just been using Flashaboo, and it seems to be working just as well. So I'm going to bring that up just to cover up that little bit at the back. Now I might need a little bit more of the Flashaboo. I've been too conservative with it. Just get that dubbed on. And then I've left enough room at the front to bring my chinchilla over. And just again, you're looking to split the fibres just to come in and get several turns Minimum of three, I'll do four for luck. In front, several turns, and then again 
get a couple of half hitch turns in bring it all up and this is the most awkward part actually this uh, back end now I've just used my fingers there to hold that into place make sure it's nice and tight and then come with your scissors and you can remove your thread now before I uh, move on just wetting my thumb and forefinger get everything back out the way you don't want your super glue getting on any of your fibres it will trap them in just add a little bit there and that will secure that into place so that's the, the tough bit on the next bit's a lot easier so you can release that and then get your front hook in the vise like so make sure it's clamped into position now as I said I would use usually have the whole chinchilla strip here but for easy use I've just done that and what I want to do is measure it up against the hook and that looks like it's going to be perfect bit of luck there no doubt so next again I'm going to get some wax onto my nano silk this time and I'm going to catch that in behind the eye bring it all the way back to where I finished off now to help you if you've got this facility with your vice just stick your hook in, in there like so and what you want to do is find where you're going to tie it down and you don't want it leaving a gap like this or too tight you want it just sitting to where it should fit now I'm going to leave it a bit like that I'm just, I've got a little bit of waste here with the chinchilla but not too much you know if I was being really pedantic what I can do is take this little strip put it back in the packet and then maybe use that as um, a cormorant wing or something similar you know there's still enough there there's still there's still a bit of use in that material is what I'm saying don't just throw away bits and bobs like this you never know when you'll get some use out of them so that's now attached I want to make sure I've got that well and truly bedded down I can see the end of my fly there almost and I've got that in position so, so far so good I mean the movement you get in the water with this is just beyond belief, it's fantastic so I want a couple of runners and I'm just using some of this it's a mix of pearl and silver hank but you know, you don't have to use this, use what you've got you want maybe four or five strands that I've sort of leveled out here I'm going to just take my scissors and take them off and then what I can do is just to get a taper, I want them all different lengths and you want this to run approximately the length of the fly so I'll catch that in there like so and then pull that out the other side and there's my flash runner there now it does look rather messy when uh, it's in the vice dry like this but in the water as you can imagine this all slicks back and just pulses through so, so far so good next I'm going to add in a wire rib and uh, although the label's gone from this this is from fish on and it's the 0 0.14 silver wire 
and I'm going to capture that in next. A bit of a marathon video this one, but as I say, uh, I'll index all the parts, so if you want to skip through the video to the parts that you want to, you're not sure of or you want to revisit, then you're able to do that. Okay, next I'm going to add in the body again. I'm using some more of the silver flashaboo as my dubbing. Uh, the same the same principle uh, applies to any other style of snake that you want to make you know if you want to make it with booby eyes you just don't put your your tin eyes on and uh, you can create all manner of different styles of snake again I've under under egged the old flashaboo it's lovely stuff this easy to work with dubs on really well and gives a fantastic effect under the the body of the fly. So let's just excellent. Next, then I'm going to use some grizzle hackle to hackle up the body, and I've got my hackle all prepared. I've left my little tag end here, and I'm going to catch that in. Not happy with that. I'm tying it in the wrong way. So over the top of my eyes, nice and gentle at first. You don't want to um, catch this in so that you actually cut into the hackle, especially with the nano silks. They're so strong, it's e very easy to just put too much pressure on and cut your hackle. So I've just broke the, the stem so it sits up at a 45 degree angle, sorry, 90 degree angle from the, the hook shank. I'm going to bring that around the front. Now. now with a feather this length, I can afford to put a couple of turns in at the head here. And then trying to keep my turns nice and even. I'm going to come up the body and I will meet my silver wire which I've got tucked here and bring that over to trap in my hackle. And I'm going to work my way through the palmer up through the fly. all the way to the head. I'm just taking time to weave through the fibres. It doesn't matter if you trap a few, but you, you do want to try and keep as many as possible free. So I'll add into your movement. Then, once you've got it trapped in, you can work away your silver wire and keep tension on your thread get your fingers in there and twist it away now what I like to do with this is just get a few more turns, all them fibres back I can then come in and remove my feather at the back here And then just to finish it off, another tiny little bit of flashaboo that you're going to catch in to hide your thread wraps in behind the eye. And then once you've done that, bring your thread to the front. Just jag myself there. And again, it's going to be a bloodbath shortly. <laughs> uh, and then whip finish. Now I will go over this head again with some super glue. 
but I think this video has been long enough as it is. You've probably um, grown a beard the time you've taken to watch it. But that is essentially the fly done. It's going to generate loads of movement and it's going to catch you lots of fish. For ease of use, I've left the hook on the front of this fly, but I will, at a later date, be cutting that off. It just increases the movement and it makes the fly much more effective. Thanks very much for watching. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for tuning in and putting up with me again. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. I would really appreciate your support. And I'll see you all next time.